sound. Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. No, I'm kidding. I just wanted to say it one time because I really like that show, Just One More Watch. Uh, yeah, this is Uptick right here. And yesterday I picked up the new Seiko. Don't call it the Alpinist. It's inspired by the Alpinist. It's the SPB117. Uh, so it's the black dial, although you can see that uh, while the rotating bezel is uh, indeed a glossy pitch black color, the dial itself is more like the old Metallica t-shirt you've been wearing for 15 years at every show. So it's faded out. It's almost granular. Uh, it has a bit of a texture to it and it's more, more gray than black, actually. So why did I buy this one when I was saying that I would get first the, uh, the cream version? Well, the shop had everything. They had the cream with the, the silver indices. They didn't have the cream with the gold indices, but anyway, I didn't want that one. And they had the, the green one, very similar to the outgoing version, which I have here on a NATO strap from Mr. Chrono. I don't think it's in the US. Uh, you might find those in Hong Kong and in uh, Paris. They might be online, Mr. Chrono. And um, let's compare a bit the similarities and uh, the differences. And so, yeah, the cream one has the same dial layout as the, as the outgoing version. And I felt it's a bit too close and it looked a bit anemic. Also, it comes on a reasonably good uh, leather band with a deploying clasp but you know those things leather and deploying clasp if they're not of the better of a better degree they tend to be really shit and uh, uncomfortable and the leather i could tell would take weeks to uh, to soften to a point where i could uh, wear it and demonstrate it for you and anyway i thought the the black dial here was more interesting because it's a totally different layout with those uh the, those triangles and uh the, the minute uh, indices rather than having uh, our indices. And you might have seen this uh, dial before, of course, because it's not actually something new. It's just a reissue of the dial you would find on the Alpinists uh, bearing the 4S movement of the mid 90s, if I'm correct. Uh, a friend of mine uh, who hopefully will speak soon on the channel uh, will be able to tell you a lot more because he does own those uh, vintage ones. So they bring back those, uh, those dials in the cream version with a coded um, bezel, rotating in, uh, inner bezel, and in the, the black version. So I went with this, and also it comes on, uh, on the bracelet. Now we can start with this because it's a big difference. The bracelet, it really rattles a lot. It, it's, it's soft like all Seiko bracelets, so it, it doesn't feel bad. What I really don't like right off the bat is the, the female um, first link. You know, I prefer the, the, the male ones, although they extend on the wrist, uh, the, the, link, the, 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 the length on the wrist, uh, if they extend out, it tends to be a much more stable uh, option. While here you see a bit of a wobble already. Now the... The pins are very simple pins, you know, a bit like the, those hairpins that you push. Uh, there's no small uh, sleeve holding it, so no risk to, to lose it. It was very easy to remove them, unlike the, on the old bracelets. So really, it just took three seconds and I've removed three links. You have a further adjustment here on the clasp. Now the clasp itself, it's a simple folding and it's a good quality, I have to say, compared to the old metal, uh, pressed metal ones. You can see how it closes here. It snaps in and you need uh, to press both sides to open it. One thing, two things I don't like is uh, that big gaping hole reminding me of the Hamilton uh, clasps. It's, uh, it's not very elegant and also it, it wobbles as well. So yeah, it's a five out of 10. It is decent, but we're gonna come back to this. For this price range, I don't think it's, uh, it's good enough. The case is fairly, it's pretty much the, the same. So beautiful, the, the, the beautiful case that we uh, know and love so much. Same crowns, but we've lost the etching of the S on the side, and that's a real shame. I don't know how much it costs them to do that, but come on. It, it looks very bland without it. Otherwise, the other one is the, is the same. This one is concave, while this one is flat. 
and uh, the knurling is exactly the same as the as on the outgoing one. It's a very nice looking uh, uh, little crown actually. Uh, I like them. At the bottom, um, now we have a display case back. And again, at this price point, I would like to see a bit more decoration. I mean, this is as bland as it gets, uh, but it's the, a view on the uh, upgraded movement. It's the 6R35, while this one ran the 6R15. And this one is supposed to have 70 hours of power reserve. I haven't checked it yet. But I can, all, I can just tell you that the accuracy so far is pretty good, around plus two seconds a day. And we will see about the power reserve. I'll try to check it for you if it does last uh, three days. Uh, and I think uh, the thickness is 13.2, perhaps, something like that. So maybe slightly a hair thicker than the old version, but barely noticeable. So overall, it's the same, just short of 40 millimeter case that we, we know and love. And, uh, and I like this, this dial, I like the hands, the loom is good, bright uh, fluorescent green at first, and then in, in the morning they kind of look uh, white, but you can still read the time, no problem at 6 a.m. Now the big difference here is we have a Cyclops, and only something that I don't mind, it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting visual thing happening. But look at the old version, that framed, color-coded to the bezel, uh, window. It's, it's easily legible, legible in any position. Well, the problem with this Cyclops is that the, the little window on top there, the magnifying window, is, is a bit small, so you kind of have to be really on top of the watch. You can't really read it from a side. So it reduce, reduces your angle. And uh, while like this in front of the, the camera with this light, it's easy to read. In person, with an artificial light on top of you, it tends to reflect on the on, on it and make it very difficult to, to read. Apart from that, we still have a sapphire crystal like we had before, still have 200 meters of water resistance. The writing on the dial is quite nice. The Seiko is a bit bigger, but it's not, it is very discreet, especially because it's gray on gray. Uh, now you have the uh, Prospects logo. Uh, I can take it or leave it, but it kind of works with all the, the information, all those little numbers and uh, and things. It's, it, it's okay, it's not unpleasant. The automatic, automatic uh, writing keeps the same font and uh, the 20 bar uh, note here has a different font but I, I like how it went uh, red and it ties in with the little red markings on the bezel. So that's a very cool, very nice touch. So if we get a bit, a bit closer here, you, we see the, uh, those triangle indices with a, with a minute reference of 55, for example. Then on top of it, you have a rectangle. Then inside, you have a little plot of loom. And then uh, around, you have that uh, rotating bezel, which used to be quite wobbly and move as you walked, which kind of defeats the purpose if you're trying to use this as an actual tool to, uh, to guide you uh, through the, the mountains or the forest. Uh, this one seems a, a bit better anchor, doesn't seem to, to move as much. I don't have that same uh, wobble effect that I that I had with the um, with the old one, you, uh, which easily moves as you as you walk. But f it's pretty much uh, the, the same uh, the, the same build, maybe slightly slightly tighter. Speaking of which, the, the crown feels a bit uh, different, but still very easy to uh, pull out the winding. It's not too coarse, very, quite similar, slightly, maybe slightly more, more coarse, if that's uh, the right word to explain it, uh, than the 6R15, but it's, it's okay. Uh, first position, easy to find to, uh, to change the, the, the date here. There you go. Quick set date, and then, of course, you can stop it and uh, change the time. It's easy to screw back in. That's what I like about the Seikos. Usually they're very straightforward and uh, there's no wobble of the, the minute hand when you reactivate. Uh, so you can very, very be very precise when you set this watch. And as you can see, uh, you can set to very precise positions. Let's talk about the, the price. I think that's gonna be the most uh, divisive uh, element about this watch. The retail is 700 bucks. I paid 12% off, then a little discount. It was like 6, 650. 
And while the old one, I think I got it for 300, maybe 350. And I don't think you can really justify just for a Cyclops and a, display and a more power reserve the, the price difference, especially given the competition, especially since it's still a 3 hertz movement. You know, if I've experienced, and I showed you on the channel, the uh, Steinhardt, you know, they have, it's a great experience buying from them. You order on the website, it, within two days you, you get it. You have all the insurance, you can bring it back if you, don't, if you don't like the watch. You can send it back if you don't like the watch. 4 hertz adjusted um, Celita or maybe ETA movement. Uh, depends a bit uh, what, they, what they get in. And uh, that's 350 euros. So, so here it's almost, uh, it's almost double. A bit, bit difficult to justify. So if you're a big fan, you want it quickly, yeah, you can go to the shop like I did. I wanted to show you. Uh, but I would say these are probably going to trend. And suddenly, if you try to, to sell it, they, they're going to trend towards the $400 mark, uh, I feel. It's not a limited edition. It's back in the, the catalog for, for long under the Prospects banner now. So it's a great watch at $300. It, it's a good watch at $400. It's, uh, I think it's, it's a bit under par at uh, the above $600 level, especially with, uh, because of the, the bracelet and, uh, well, and the fact that uh, we know where it comes from and uh, we know we used to get it for, for cheaper. But it's a good looking watch. Uh, I like this, uh, this layout. And um, the reason I bought it, besides uh, showing it to you here, is also that it's gonna be a nice watch uh, to give to uh, one of my nephews with the water resistance, they like swimming and all that. Uh, I think it's a watch that uh, is good in, in any situation. You can still wear it under a short cuff with no problem. So there you go. Let me know what you think if, you, if you're going to buy one. I think no rush. Uh, hopefully you can get them under the $500 mark at some point. Or maybe just wait to uh, buy uh, one on the, the used market. In a, in a few uh, months, maybe weeks even. All right, bye-bye. Take care.